Hey everybody, I got a video here for you today, and this is by request. I've had a few comments, questions, had a few links sent to me about an underwater Neolithic site in the Mediterranean, and I want to thank those people because I have not made a video about this site, and I want to have on my channel videos about all the really, really ancient sites, especially. So I think this video is long overdue, but this is a site called Atlet Yam, and I've had a few other questions on underwater sites that I can segue into here pretty easily. But this is the coast here, and research has said that the ancient coastline before sea levels rose was extended a few kilometers out, and maybe by the light blue you can kind of maybe see that ancient coastline, and that's where Atlet Yam lies underwater. And this is Ancient Origins, and let's just read a little here, and I thought this is pretty fascinating. They found a well down here, and if I was to see that today, I would say that was pretty well constructed, even by today's standards. But let's just read. It says, Not far off the coast of the village of Otlet in the Mediterranean Sea lies the submerged ruins of an ancient Neolithic site of Otlet Yam. The prehistoric settlement, which dates back to the 7th millennium BC, has been so well preserved by the sandy seabed that a mysterious stone circle still stands as it was first erected, and dozens of human skeletons lay undisturbed in their graves. Atlet Yam is one of the oldest and largest sunken settlements ever found, and sheds new light on the daily lives of its ancient inhabitants. Today Atlet Yam lies between 8 and 12 meters beneath sea level, and covered an area of 40,000 square meters. The site was first discovered in 1984 by marine archaeologists Ehud Galili, and since then, underwater excavations have unearthed numerous houses, stone-built water wells, a series of long, long unconnected walls, ritual installations, stone-paved areas, a megalithic structure, thousands of flora and fauna, fauna remains, dozens of human remains, and numerous artifacts made of stone, bone, wood, and flint. So it seems this was a pretty organized cultural center, and here is the stone ruins laying at the center of this site. So they obviously had uh, some organization, some spirituality, some purpose, and the meaning of these stone circles is, of course, up in the air. But those are in pretty, pretty impressive uh, monolithic stones, almost two meters in height. And it says, another significant structural feature of the site is a stone-built well which was excavated down to a depth of 5.5 meters. At the base of the well, archaeologists, archaeologists found sediment fill containing animal bone, stone, flint, wood, and bone artifacts. This suggests that in its final stage, it ceased to function as a water well and was used instead as a disposal pit. The change in function was probably related to a salinization of the water due to a rise in sea level. Now, it also said human remains reveal the oldest known case of tuberculosis, and I find that pretty interesting from some study on some bones that were done here. And it says, what caused Alayam to sink? It says, one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of Alayam is how it became submerged, a question that has led to a heated debate in academic circles. And that's a real shocker. But it says, one theory is that when the eastern flank of Mount Etna 8,500 years ago erupted, that would have caused a 40-meter-high tsunami to engulf that side of the Mediterranean within hours. And that, I suppose, is a very good possibility. Seems that side of the Mediterranean has been hit by tsunamis over the course of many thousands of years. I remember looking into the research of 9,600 B.C. that Randall Carlson talks about. But there was clear evidence of tsunami at that time in 9600 BC, so it seems 6500 BC, about 3000 years later, that area was hit by another tsunami. And there have been tsunamis all over the Mediterranean. And uh, of course, if Santorini erupted, that would have definitely caused tsunamis. But that is one area of the world that has been repeatedly have the coast, the coastal lines changed by tsunamis. I just wanted to mention that. Now, when looking at these underwater stone circular structures here, it reminded me of Graham Hancock's talk on Yanaguni, and I have had questions on Yanaguni, this underwater site in Japan. Now, here is a video I made almost two years ago now, 
And I'm going to include a clip here, Graham Hancock talking on the Joe Rogan experience about diving on Yanaguni, and Robert Chalk thinking it's a naturally man-made structure. Hancock clearly thinks this was carved, man-made. Is the answer somewhere in the middle? Well, let's take a listen. Shock would not uh, accept that it was uh, a man-made structure, but but I have to say that at that point, um, Yonaguni is a very difficult dive. It's a very difficult dive. The seas are wild. There's a huge current flows right in front of the monument, and you have to be uh, an accomplished diver to do any work. Uh, Shock was on his second open water dive at this point, and uh, on those initial dives that we did on Yonaguni. Um, he was largely fighting for his life. Jesus um, Christ. It's very <laughs> it's, you guys are balls. I love it. <laughs> it's very, and my, you know, but my wife Santa, who's a photographer, and I, uh, Santa's right here with us, have done um, uh, more than 200 plus dives on the Yonaguni Monument. We went through the process of learning to dive and really getting the skills to be able to handle that kind of current, which is literally going to rip your mask off your face and take your record out of your mouth um, it, it's like swimming in a river against the current actually so what I would say is that I, I think shock was a little premature with that conclusion and I think uh, he, he's I have huge respect for Robert shock I have huge respect for his openness of mind and his geological acumen but not enough time was spent on the monument to reach that decision and it's not just one monument it's a whole complex of monuments and further north settles it for me off uh, Okinawa which is about Four or five hundred miles north of Yonaguni, there is a majestic stone circle, 110 feet beneath the water, which again Santa and I have dived on extensively, which Shock has not seen. Uh, which is there is just no way on earth that that monument could have been. Do you have photos of this online? Yes, we do. We have photos on the website. What would I look for? Um, okay, you go on to www. You know, Graham, I'm sure if I just Google it. Go to GrahamHancock.com. Okay. And then go to gallery. And then go to underwater. We have underwater on the gallery. Gallery underwater. Yes. Oh man. And in the underwater section, you're going to see a stone circle somewhere there, with a, with somebody above it holding a video camera. That's me holding the video camera. Oh yeah. And down on the down below you is a stone circle. And there's probably some more shots of it. I'm going to just come around and see what you're looking at there. <laughs> I was looking at this right here. Is that okay, it? Okay. Yeah. That's the stone circle. This is the central upright, and these are the surrounding uprights. Yeah, that's somebody made that. Get and out this of thing, here. And this thing is 12 feet high. Wow. Wow. And it's 110 feet beneath the sea. That's so cool. Wow. That's incredible. And that's amazing. It's the most extraordinary thing. And, and uh, 110 feet beneath the sea tells us that it was made at least... 13,000 years ago, because that's the last time that 110 foot level was above sea level. Now, some of these ruins are fairly recent geologically, so not all ruins are, you know, come from the end of the Ice Age, that time period, or the Younger Dryas time period. But uh, there are ruins found off of Alexandria that clearly come from the dynastic Egypt period and we just got to ask what kind of geological processes would, you know, put a coastal city all the way underwater in, you know, the past 4,000 years. But I will leave all these links below. This is from the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, and this obviously is uh, a ruin, a recent ruin in Lake Huron. But I have been sent some messages from uh, some divers who found some pretty interesting things on the floor of Lake Superior and I might be going into that at a later date in the Great Lakes I think the Great Lakes are a true mystery how those were actually formed and this is Lisverse and they go over 10 incredible ruins and here is one off of Guatemala that are clearly Mayan ruins Cleopatra's Palace Alexandria here are some ruins in Greece, and here is that one in Israel again, that they say is at least from 7000 BC, around that time period. Now here is one from India, Mahabalampuram, and of course there is another famous underwater site that I have mentioned in a video previously. This mythical city found underwater, 
where this was really a city of legend. And I think the tsunami in 2004, when the tide went out, the city was exposed. And people kind of freaked out that it was actually there. But Dwarka is another underwater city. There are Mayan ruins underwater off the Yucatan, off Guatemala, and a few other places. Now we have other underwater ruins. And uh, Nan Madal I included in this video too. So I will leave the link below in case none of you have heard of Nan Madal. But this actually goes out, the ruins of this place, goes out into the ocean. And there seems to be structures underneath the water here. That's another site we need to ask questions about. But underwater, we have really, I think, I think some of the most fascinating ruins because we know for sure that they are really, really old. And one of the things that I had uploaded about, but I hadn't really talked about for a long time, and I have always questioned, is some ruins found in the Aegean Sea. And they were actually found by Titanic discoverer Robert Ballard. And I remember making a video maybe about four years ago about this and asking anybody if anything further was found down here. But let me just play a clip. Twelve stone circles, and they aren't small, were found at the bottom of the GNC by Titanic discoverer Robert Ballard. Let me just play that clip real quick here. Because we constantly are making discovery. We just, we just got back. We were out in the ship and we were doing all sorts of crazy things. And we were doing a thing with National Geographic on the Battle of Gallipoli off of the, in the Aegean, uh, looking for these warships uh, from the time of uh, World War I. And we found them and we we're all sorts of cool. And we're looking, but what I love about what I do is most of the really important discoveries I made were done by accident looking for something else. I didn't expect to find those clams. I didn't expect to find those black smokers. There's so many of my discoveries that I did not, I stumbled on them. And here's another classic example. So National Geographic says, go find these warships. And we go, yeah, cool, we know sort of where they are. We'll mow the lawn, find them. So I'm going in here and I'm trying to find a battleship called the HMS Triumph up here off Anzac Beach. And we found it, but as I was coming in on the area where the battleship was, I look over my sonar and I see this. I see a ring, a circular ring that's 45 meters across with a, some sort of structure in the middle. What is that? That is probably a site of human habitation 9,000 years ago when that particular piece of real estate was above water. A Neolithic site, one of the oldest now discovered. And we went down and walls of stone, we found 12 of them. We're heading back there to do some more on them in a few months. So I thought that was very fascinating. And I had not heard a peep on any of those stone circles or what was found under the Aegean Sea. Just off the coast of Turkey by Robert Ballard. And I always thought that was fascinating. I've shared that before, but I have a lot bigger audience now. So I thought that was definitely worth the reshare. That is lost history. That is sophisticated human activity coming from a time period that we know very little about. Now let me just conclude by reading a little bit more about Atla Yam, what I started this video about. It says the ancient artifacts to unearth at Atla Yam offer clues into how the prehistoric inhabitants once, once lived. Researchers have found traces of more than 100 species of plants that grew at the site or were collected from the wild and animal remains consisted of bones of both wild and domesticated animals, including sheep, goat, pig, dog, and cattle, suggesting that the residents raised and hunted animals for subsistence. Seems they maybe had pets, too. In addition, more than 6,000 fish bones were found, combined with other clues, such as an ear condition found in some human remains caused by regular exposure to cold water, and growing up in Minnesota, I think I know what they're talking about. It seems that fishing also played a role in their society. So it seems like the people at Atla Yam that lived, they say, about 9,000 years ago, they grew crops, they raised cattle, they had pets, they had a well. Seems they were not that different than people that were maybe existing in the 18th century. Really? In basic terms? Now, I always thought that ancient underwater ruins was a fascinating subject. And I have talked about them, but not recently. So thanks for those people who sent me messages. 
This is a time period that we know little about. How much archaeology can actually be done at the bottom of the seafloor? Well, it's very limited, but it seems that the ancient ruins are on ancient coastlines and they are underwater today. But it's a great clue that they are very, very ancient. They're fascinating. It's a time period we know little about. And when really the question of how far back human civilization goes, and when John Anthony West and Robert Schock presented their findings in Egypt, I think it was about 25 years ago, they were laughed at, their findings were ignored. And Mark Lehner said, where is the cultural context for a society that goes back maybe 12,000 years? Well, Mr. Lehner, your cultural context is all over the place. Places such as Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, Gunung Padang, and all these ancient ruins that are stretching civilization back thousands of years earlier than your accepted history. Well, there is a new history being written, Mr. Lehner, and you're being left in the dust. These are some thoughts on some underwater ruins that push human civilization back thousands of years. Hope you thought this was interesting. And I'm ready for dinner. You all have a nice night.